Well, happy Mother's Day and welcome to Elston Family Church this Sunday morning. Thank you. It's good to see everybody. Um, just a couple short announcements um, and then we'll kick right into worship. Um, first, next Sunday is graduation recognition. So our graduating seniors, we have a couple right there. Uh, we're going to spend some time with um, Love It On You. So um, just to give everyone a heads up, um, that'll be an important part of next Sunday. So please come and join us um, to recognize and honor our students who have come a long way. And we're really excited to pray over and see where the Lord's taking them forward. Um, also, for those that are helping in children's church with our nursery and pre-K kids and families, Pastor Randy is going to kind of cue us through when to go. So I said last week, we're going to try out a couple different ways. So we're trying out a different way. Um, so for those of you in the house this morning, um, just um, wait for his cue and, and we'll head you, you can head out that way. Also to those that are watching from home this morning on Facebook, welcome. It's good to see you, not see you. So everybody that's in the house and at home, like I like to say, let's get to our feet. We have a big God we get to come before to praise his great name. Amen. So as we stand together, this first song we're going to kick in is just, it's really just an, an invocation that, and a declaration that we're going to call upon the Lord this morning. You know, in reading in the Old Testament, you see where the Israelites and the Lord would bless them and he would do amazing things and take them across the dry land and the Red Seas parted on both sides and doing this miraculous stuff and then feeding them in the wilderness every day. They, their shoes never wore out. That'd be great. Their clothes never wore out. That'd be great. And then they'd turn right around and they'd begin to worship other things. And we are not that different. <laughs> so this morning, I just want us as a church... As a family, those of you who are watching, to call upon the Lord because He alone is the one who can save. He alone is the one who can redeem. He alone is the one who can help you through your dry place or your hard place in life. Amen? Call upon the Lord this morning. hiding place our hope is safe within your name yes we know yes we know you promised you promised never to forsake what you began you will sustain yes we know yes we know
Jesus' name will break every stronghold. Freedom is ours when we call his name. Jesus' name above every other. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name will break every stronghold. Freedom is ours when we call his name. Jesus' name. been uh, talking about worship and worshiping the Lord and his love for us and how great his love is and Mary at the feet of Jesus doing the main thing. So again, this morning is a lot about just declaring and, and just speaking out you know, we lean into so much and we try to build our lives on so much that's wrong and faulty. There's only one foundation and that's the foundation of God's love. And so this morning as we continue in our worship, that we would build our lives on His love. Build our lives on the strong foundation of His love for us. That regardless love, that great love that yet while we were sinners... He still went to the cross and died for us. Worthy. 
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. For you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your Wonderful. 
shall ever be how marvelous oh how wonderful is my Savior's love for me let's sing I stand amazed again I stand
You're the one who took our burdens and you bled upon the cross. In your kindness and your mercy, you became the way for us. Forgetting all our sins, you remember all your recognize and understand you alone have the power and the strength to save. You alone can break through what seems impossible. This morning, Lord, we just praise you and thank you for your greatness, your amazing presence. So right now, we'd like to just kind of make that transition. And as they move on to their place of service and loving on our kids and the future generation of this church, we're going to just continue to sing how amazing he is. Oh, how glorious you are amazing. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, how glorious you are amazing. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how glorious.
your power, of your beauty, of this plan of redemption that you have and have had for all of us. Father, before you, we see you in awe and wonder. And we wrap ourselves in your very presence this morning. We love you and we thank you. We thank you that you accept our small words to glorify your bigness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, you can be seated. So good morning, and happy Mother's Day. The weather didn't quite cooperate, did it? So there's no real good, positive, transitional type ways to get kids and workers, you know, in their movement. It's almost like you and your wife on the couch trying to watch Nacho Libre and being very intimate, and there's a knock on the door, and... You know, it's just that kind of thing. Yeah, it would be me that would bring those kind of things to your thought patterns, wouldn't it? Well, I've been out of the saddle for quite a while. It's been close to three months, and in, in, in I was a little concerned just about today because I knew I was coming back to kind of a full meal deal, and my stamina has kind of been up and down, and rhythm is all out of whack. And I hadn't touched the keyboard and hadn't sang in really about two and a half months. I mean, and it's not because I was angry or mad or I just didn't. Part of it's because I didn't have the energy. I was tired a lot. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I had heart surgery in February, and it's been quite the journey. So anyway, so I was a little concerned about this morning. So I just decided yesterday I played a little bit, sang a little bit. I'm like, you know, we're just going to fly. We're just going to get in the saddle. We're going to ride out. And we're going to see what happens. And, and I believe that God was with us for the most part this morning. So I, I think it's good to be back. I'm not sure. My body will tell me later today whether I agree with that or not. So we had a vacation last week, and that was good. Uh, we, were, we were at the beach. That's always wonderful therapy. If you need therapy, go to the beach or go to the mountains or go wherever you need. Um, although do it without 18 people, maybe next time. So today... <laughs> We take the whole crew, and it's, 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 it's a journey. It is a journey. So um, today is Mother's Day, and, and we want to honor you. We want to celebrate that. And um, so Angela and I are going to kind of tandem just a little bit. I'm going to kind of set some things up, and then she's going to share a little bit of a personal testimony of where she's been in this whole framework of motherhood and the celebrating of Mother's Day over the years. But it was officially celebrated, you know, back in the early 1900s, and, and it's not like a public federal holiday, like you don't normally get the day off because it's on Sunday anyway, and everything stays open pretty much. Um, but, you know, it's, it's the idea of just celebrating motherhood and traditions of maternal bonds and the influence of our mothers in our lives and all that kind of stuff. So this morning I have a question for you. Do you currently have a mother or have you had a mother in the past? Not a trick question. Yes, we all have had a mother or have a mother. So if we were to kind of take the time and just tell stories or, or, or talk about our experience with our mothers, it, it would be all over the map. There'd be some stories this morning of good, like my mom was really good and, and, and good stories and heartfelt, warm and fuzzy, not to be disrespectful, but hallmark kinds of, you know. Then there's those that might tell the story of their mom not being so good. It wasn't so great. There, there's moms that, that were very faithful in their role, and they did well, and then there's moms that miserably failed, and that can be due to literally lots of circumstances and situations in their lives in trying to raise us as kids. There'd be stories about absent moms, neglectful moms, hurtful moms, and then there'd be stories about moms who literally did everything they did, that they could. They literally did everything they knew to do right, striving to be the best mom, and still it never seemed like it ever measured up. And there's just those expectations and 
what a mom should look like and how she should be, and you get media that communicates things and movies that tell us things. But regardless of our story, you know, this holiday, lots of money has been spent and probably will still be spent today after lunch going out and buying mom a present or flowers or a coupon to somewhere. And dads and moms and kids and our dads and kids and husbands all over the place will try to make mom happy today with some sort of a gift or but what we want to kind of dwell on and focus on this morning is kind of the flip side of that. And what if you don't get a gift today? What if you don't get any flowers? And what if nobody recognizes you? The sting of a day that's celebrated, but yet sometimes very hurtful and hard and difficult for various reasons. Some of us have lost our mothers. Lisa and I lost our mothers a long time ago. Some mothers and fathers have lost a child, and they say that's one of the worst grieving processes. Some within our community, our family, our church family even, know the pain of infertility. There are grandparents who are raising their grandkids, and it is just flat hard. There are stepmoms who thought when the altar said, you are now married and you can kiss your bride, that 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 process would somehow magically turn into a wonderful, blended situation because, you know, the movies always paint it that way. And there's the sting of my blended family not being quite so blended. Some have experienced failed or delayed adoptions. And some just long to be a mom For some reason, God has put a hold on that for the season. Then, our culture, add to the confusion of gender identity right now and those issues. And what we know and recognize and understand as Mother's Day and a tradition of it may soon be kind of just swept to the side. So where do we go from here? How do we process? How do we find peace and comfort in the midst of all these varied situations and circumstances? You know, the church has not always done well in this. I mean, our church included, me as pastor of this church included. When we would have the time where, okay, the oldest mother in the room, in the room stand up. Well, like she wants everybody to know she's 75. Okay, you with the most kids, you stand up and... She can't remember because she lost count, and maybe some of them are still outside. Oh, the youngest mother, you stand up. And that could be embarrassing because she might be 15 or 16. And so the church just hasn't always addressed it very well, and we've kind of focused in one category, and there's a lot of categories to motherhood, a lot. We just kind of want to look at that today and address it. So, so where do we go and, and what do we do? I say, first of all, we do what we just did. We seek his face in worship and try to take our reflection from his image and not the image of the world. And then we go to his word and we, we find truth. Because there's a lot of voices and a lot of noise that want to tell us a lot of things that aren't true. So today, I, I want us to, to get a kingdom perspective. You know, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, and in that model prayer, he said, you know, our Father, which art in heaven, he was telling them, you've got to worship the Lord first. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We all know the model prayer for the most part. But he was telling them, ask for my perspective. Ask for the Father's perspective. Because we can really get messed up with the earthly perspective. So what's his word about you as a woman, as a mother, as a family, as a husband and wife unit? So I'd like for Angela to share just a bit of her own story and kind of bring that perspective as she tries to kind of reclaim and reframe this for us today. Thanks, Pastor Randy. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. You know, Mother's Day, it is a day that we set aside back in the early 1900s to honor our mothers. You know, Adam came from dirt, 
and Eve came from Adam's rib. So guys, you are a dirt bag. Know that from now on. He said it, not me. Just putting it in biblical perspective. <laughs> yes. So when she calls you that, just know it came from the Bible. Dirt bag. <laughs> right. Yeah, check out Genesis, right? Um, but the rest of us, all the rest of us came from our mother's womb, where we were fearfully and wonderfully made, known and loved from before the foundation of the earth. You know, Mother's Day is often associated with flowers, maybe some jewelry, gift certificates to the spa. And I would say most mothers would agree with me that some of our best gifts have come from our children's big imaginations and small hands, like the bookmarks, the crafts, and the creations. As women, we often get these idealized images in our minds as to what our Mother's Day experiences and memories should be. That word should is a taunting and haunting one for many of us. You know, as I serve on staff here at Elson Family Church, planning for Mother's Day Sunday has been kind of tough at times. You know, part of it is, is the knowing of the spectrum of motherhood and its impact across the women and families of Elston Family Church. Again, as Randy mentioned, from childlessness to adoption and different scenarios even in that, to hard-fought motherhood through fertility treatments, to single motherhood, to stepmotherhood, as you mentioned, to just a couple of kids, and then there's a lot of kids, and then there's the mothers who have lost children, or have distant adult children, and the grandmothers raising their children's children. So we're always tasked with how do we encourage women and families on Mother's Day without tapping on some of the very real sensitive parts in our hearts. Then I add in this layer of my own personal and messy ties to Mother's Day. Mother's Day Sunday in 2010, ironically May 9th, like today, was the best worst day of my life. It was my last day gripped by an addiction to alcohol. It was here in this very place that I was faced with my rock bottom when I understood the betrayal of my addiction and I knew and could see the cost of my sin and addiction, what that looked like on Jesus, on the cross. And since then, a lot of Mother's Day Sundays, I've had to push through a lot of shame and regret to graciously accept, accept the gifts of flowers, bookmarks, crafts, and gift certificates to spas. My husband and my boys, they love me. So as the staff and the elders, as we met with Pastor Randy um, several weeks ago to look sort of at the Sunday schedule for a while he was going to be out, Mother's Day came up. And I was not super excited. Like, I wasn't obnoxiously outward about it. But our staff and our leadership knows me pretty well. And she didn't want to do it. No, I did not. <laughs> and as the weeks went by, though, I started noticing a pattern of responses from others in my circle. Sometimes sarcastic comments, not intended to be hurtful, but with a level of truth in the sarcasm, we know how much you love taking on Mother's Day, Angela. This is your thing. Or some defensive concern. Mother's Day is such a hard day for you. Is that something you really want to do? All along, I'm like, nope. No, I don't. No, I don't. In fact, I think like your first day in the office, I'm like, hey, about Mother's Day, <laughs> feel free to make that your first full Sunday back. Yep. Yep. I think it's exactly how that went. Um, but the truth is, I really started getting bothered by this pattern. I didn't like, I really didn't like my viewpoint and those feelings and that stuff that was being tied to Mother's Day. So as I often tell my sponsees and others in Celebrate Recovery, it was time for me to take a closer look at that. So I did take some time to take an inventory of my thoughts and my feelings attached to Mother's Day, both personally 
and also what I've experienced speaking on Mother's Day Sundays. And then I kind of combined that with the realities that so many women and families are facing on the spectrum of motherhood in our church. In the meantime, I, I often get challenged by my friends in recovery and family in recovery. Um, one in particular, she said, consider the process of reframing thoughts and attachments to things or people that generate a lot of tension, hurt, and disappointment. So I kind of dug into that. And I, I recently was reading a few different things um, by Dallas Willard. One of his quotes just really struck a deep chord with me. And he said this, the ultimate freedom we have as human beings is the power to select what we will allow or refuse our minds to dwell upon. So let us consider Philippians 4.8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And you add Paul's direction, like stark direction, pretty direct direction, in 2 Corinthians 10.5. And this is the, trans the translation from the Passion Translation I really liked. He said, we capture, like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. You know, my friends, the, the truth is, since the beginning of time, our enemy, Satan, the devil, has been after our thoughts, our thoughts about ourselves, about other people, and certainly of God. We see this play out real clear in Genesis 3. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. One day, he asked the woman, Eve, the chick who came from the rib, did God really say... Did he really say you must not eat fruit from any of the trees in the garden? And she's like, no, he didn't say all, any of the trees. He said the one tree. And his response to her was, you're not going to die. God knows your eyes will be opened and that you will be like God and know both good and evil. Again, in another reading that I was looking through from Dallas Willard, he did a really good job of summarizing this piece of scripture in Genesis that translates a lot to me and even to where we are today. When Satan undertook to draw Eve away from God, that was his goal, separate her from God, he did not hit her with a stick, but with an idea, a thought. It was with an idea that God could not be trusted, and that she must act on her own to secure her own well-being. You know, many of us in our nature, our bend in thinking tends to lean towards mistrusting God's goodness and faithfulness rather than toward him. We lean away from him when we don't quite agree with the circumstances or when our life is not quite measuring up to our expectations or our dreams or the expectations of others. And the truth, those circumstances, that place we find ourselves, can be really painful. And as people, as humans, we tend to see pain as an interruption of what we want rather than an opportunity for the Lord's redemption. You know, many of us sitting here today or those watching from home are sitting here knowing that Mother's Day has sharp edges, some painful edges. You know, it's attached to pain and disappointment, heartache, sometimes loss, shame. And we can know in our heads, like we'll say it, like to one another in our Christianese way of talking, that that redemption of pain and loss isn't really about God giving us what we want. Like, we know it's not about we don't get what we want. Thy will, not my will. We say that. But we have to ask ourselves, is, is do we know? Like, deep in our gut, do we know? That God's redemption work is a collaboration of taking our pain, of taking our loss and our disappointment, and not only turning it into something beautiful, but also something that can benefit way more people than just ourselves. 
throughout the Bible, and we talked about this earlier, um, you know, we try to be super holy and read the Bible in a year, right? Um, and I think I was only three days behind. You're what? A week. Okay. So I'm ahead of you. Yes. The beach killed me. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. I can understand that distraction. Um, but as we read throughout, throughout the Bible that the pain and suffering and struggle, as we're reading it for these other people, we don't see that as an interruption or a waste of their life but rather we know it's a pathway to something better. I mean, it starts from Eve into Joseph into Jesus. All of that pain and that suffering that we read about, imprisonment, abandonment, infertility, grief, betrayal, torture, and even death resulted in transformation and ultimately the salvation of many others. You know, our pain from these hard edges of motherhood and family and its impact on our life it can teach us and it changes us and it's about becoming willing to embrace this story that the lord is developing in our life and as we embrace it we begin to gain freedom from being bound to all of these expectations and then the knowing that comes with that and again it's that knowing that's deep deep within that our worthiness does not come from the role as mother. Our worthiness does not come from the label of perfect family. That we are not defined by where it is we have landed on the spectrum of motherhood and family. Romans 12, 2, and this again is a passion translation, reads, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. Now, I'm going to parenthetically add in there, and that includes Facebook memes and the Hallmark commercials and movies. <laughs> but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think, your mind being reformed. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. So that sounds really great, super holy, super awesome. But how do you do that? I see the thought bubbles above your noggins. How, right? For me, and I think for many others, it begins with being honest with ourselves and maybe even saying out loud and giving a voice to those hard edges, using the words of our feelings, of our thoughts. And then taking that awareness, like basically getting out of denial, like let's be aware of how we really feel and just kind of own it. And then take that awareness of our heart's condition to the Lord in prayer. And a lot of times we got to bring somebody else into that, right? James 3.16 tells us, you know, confess your sin to one another. I think you would also encourage us to confess our hurt and our pain with one another so we can pray together so that we're healed. And it's through that process, through that kind of owning process and being honest process that the Lord does this thing where he can move our heart toward gratitude. Now, for me, what does that look like? The Lord has been really good. He's been so good in this process for me to flip my necessary ending on a Mother's Day into a life that has been a healing in my heart, in my marriage, and with my family. Eleven years ago today, my husband had to explain to my boys why I wasn't coming home with them after Mother's Day Sunday. As he handed the craft to him, he had to explain, Mom's not doing so well. To this morning, as we left to come here and serve, my husband was praying over me. And we were praying over our family and how good God has been in this restoration and redemption of brokenness. Yeah. And then it's through that abundance of God's love that I get to live out a life of serving others, loving others in ministry. So here's the thing. Forget today's weather. Mother's Day is a beautiful day. While Adam and Eve never spent time in a mother's womb, every human since has. Even Jesus, 
the son of God. You know, our creator's design for the family is pretty amazing and so worthy of celebrating. God's goodness, his faithfulness, comfort and care for women to bring us together as forever family is pretty incredible. So as we share in our gratitude for our own mothers, even in the messy, ladies, families, let us be grateful for one another. Let us encourage one another and let's bear with one another, honoring the Lord's plan and purpose for women and mothers. So on a final note, and then I know he's gonna wrap up, happy Mother's Day to every woman here with the heart of a mother. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for the comfort that you give, if not to your own children, to the other children around you. Thank you for fighting and praying for the lives of children. I pray that you are always celebrated. And to the moms and the children, because we're all children, if you're grieving this season, my heart it grieves with you. My heart is heavy with you. But I pray that your sorrow is turned to joy as the evidence, right? We've been singing about this evidence, right? The evidence of God's promises and the fulfillment of his faithfulness and goodness. May that surround you. Thank you for letting me share. Amen. So a lot of times in these settings, and you know, here in a month, we'll, we'll direct attention towards fathers. The idea is never to just kind of, okay, guys, just hang out for a while on the outer edge and we'll, we'll catch up with you later. So, you know, so there could be even that whole sense this morning, even with young teens or other men in the room, like, what does this have to do with me? What, what connection do I have? I think there's a lot of things that you can walk away with this morning. I think it's important that you pick up on a few things. Number one, about a mother who has almost, at some point, biologically died for you to give you birth. A sacrifice that your birth mom went through to get you here, that in itself is worthy of gratitude. Uh, we, we tend to take a lot for granted, men, boys. In general, we tend to like, oh, well, mom's got it. She's, she's super. She's got the S on the chest. She rocks. And she does, but we rarely acknowledge or affirm that in her. The fact that your mother, most women, you hear the stories, you've, you've heard it on the, on the news when an athlete, you know, has a championship ring and, well, my mama prayed for me or my, my grandmother prayed for me or it, it was my granny that prayed me through and yeah, you're right. Unfortunately, more women pray for their kids than the men do. But had it not been for your mom praying for you, you might not be where you are right now. I just read a real quick clip on Chuck Norris. You know Chuck Norris, right? His mom just turned 100. 100, 100. Zero, zero. He was giving a tribute to her that it was her prayers that turned him away from sinking into a cesspool of death in Hollywood. Moms, they pray. You need men, boys, you need to acknowledge that and understand that, that why you are where you are today greatly can be contributed to your mother praying for you. I think the last thing before I close this thing out is just the idea of, of that. The, the enemy doesn't come to, to do anything other than sell you for an idea. So, so, women, let me just connect with you first. Selling you the idea that you have messed up and you flat are not a good mom. Well, pfft, out the door. Out the door. Again, we want to, today, let's reframe that. Let's, let's refocus. Let's reclaim that. That God's words over you are what are important here, not what the enemy's trying to whisper in selling you an idea. Even selling you an idea of, about your husband or your spouse. And, and, and so, again, I'm not to take away from Angela's testimony, but just between her and Eric, that's amazing because he was selling both of them on this idea that this is not worth our time. 
young people selling you on the idea that you'll never make it, you'll never be a success, maybe because mom and dad have not affirmed you enough. You know, that's one of the things that Lisa and I which I've talked a lot about in our own personal recovery in our marriage and our own personal relationships. Our parents never affirmed us at all in the ways that we really needed it. Now, they were good people, and they provided, and they protected, but they didn't affirm us. They didn't call us out. And by the way, man, just a little clip for next month. That's one of the things I want us to do is call our sons out as young men for the kingdom of God. So as we close out, normally today we would, we would take this time and Lisa would come up and, and we'd have a little basket and we'd give you a token gift. And, and, and we'd have fun doing that because we've had a lot of fun doing it through the years. Usually, you know, we spend, I don't want to say this not like, well, look at us, but we spend hours sometimes looking for just something significant. I mean, for five bucks or less, it's hard to find something, right? Man, we just painstakingly just, just and we fight over it sometimes. It's like, I'm done with this. You can go figure it out yourself. And then we come together, and Jesus is in the middle, and it's all wonderful. And Sunday morning's Mother Day. We give you that gift, and you're all, oh, that's so sweet. Especially last year, the Igloo coupon really hit it, did it not? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not today. We thought about a lot of things. It was actually part of Angela's thinking that brought us to this. We're not not giving you a gift because we don't love you, because we do love you. We do. We love you. We care for you. We believe in you. But a $5 gift is not going to make or break you. A $5 coupon at Igloo is not going to make your life completely different. For the moment, maybe. But not eternally. Ron's been preaching on God's amazing love, that regardless kind of love, a love so great that yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. But as he said last week, we love to receive it. We love to hear about God's love, but we are not very good at giving love away. We're not good at really loving others well. So today, the, the flip, if you will, the reframing this morning is that we would love others a little bit better today. We, we've tasked you and we've asked you to, to serve in the back and to, to, to love our children well within this building. The next generation, the future of this church, love them well. Spend 30 minutes back there telling them about Noah and Noah's Ark and God's love for redemption, to redeem you and me. But we want to step outside the walls. So what we would normally take and give you and spend that money, we're going we're gonna to split it between a couple of organizations. We just thought that would that, that'd just be a great idea. Just, let's just love on other people. So we, you know, Matrix is, is a great organization that, that, that brings education and support to women and men facing, and again, women and men who are facing difficult pregnancy decisions, giving them alternatives to a possible abortion. Gifts of Grace, an organization that's a full adoption agency that helps families and moms through this adoptive process. And finally, the Foster Closet, just started by Innovation Church here in town. You know, we have families in this church that foster, and, and, and you get a call, and, and they want you to take a, a nine-month-old, and you don't normally stock diapers because you're an empty nester. Well, my goodness, I mean, if they, we were fostering and they called, no, we don't even have that. So that foster closet is a process of being able to gain what you might need if you were taking on and fostering a child. So that's what we want to do. That's just how we want to reframe this. It's just that money that we'd normally have given to you in a $5 coupon to Igloo is just give it to these organizations. Now, a, a catch real quick. Some of us, again, have lost our mothers. Lisa and I lost our moms a long time ago. Might we today give a gift to one of these organizations because we would have bought mom flowers, we would have bought mom whatever, might we in honor or in memory of our moms? So think about it like this, guys. I mean, you've probably already got the BMW ordered and it'll be there in the driveway when you get home for your wife today. What's another $25 gift to a worthy organization? Amen. So that's the reframing. That's the kind of rethinking. And again, changing the narrative of what Mother's Day, because sometimes it, just, it becomes heavy and oppressive and we feel so slimed by either what we do or what we don't do. 
Almost like sometimes we kind of get that taste. Because you have expectations and, and you want everybody to do whatever and then somebody doesn't show up or something happens or this happens or that happens. And So in closing, I want to pray over you and over us. I asked the worship team to come back up and we're just going to close out with a song, very familiar, Waymaker. This morning, you need to understand that there is a way through where you are right now. There's a way out. There's a way through it. God is the way maker. He's the miracle worker. He's the promise keeper. He's the light in the darkness. So wherever you are and whatever you might be facing, he is the one to call upon. Because if you're going to get to the other side and through it, he's going to be that one. I didn't ask for heart surgery, but thank goodness I got a way maker to get me through. So as we close out, I'd like for you to stand, and we're going to just pray, and I'm going to close out with this word of encouragement for our moms and those who are mothers, and also a blessing for us all this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all who are here today, all who are watching online. I pray for them because they have fulfilled a role, the ladies, at some level, and they've done some amazing things. They've sacrificed greatly, and they've loved well. Maybe today is not so positive for whatever reason. I ask that you would comfort them for wherever they are, whether it's just a hard day or a hard season. But you know all the situations that we mentioned this morning, and you know exactly what each woman in this house needs and in our community. Give them your words of affirmation, Lord. And in Jesus' name, we cut off the lying, whispering words of ideas from the enemy. And we take them captive and say no more. So this morning, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He's with you. He's with you in the morning, and the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you. He is for you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way make miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop.
never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are, you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. So as you leave today, affirm your mother if she's still alive. Affirm your wife if she's still alive. Speak blessing. Speak life. Young men, don't just tell mom you love them. Show mom you love her. And now, since there's so much love in the room, let's go get our kids. Because we love them, right? You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop.